Hi, hello, and welcome back to a demented comfort void 2x4 hellscape. Becoming a road life family influencer on TikTok has got to be the quickest way to lose not only your kids' trust, but your relationship with them in seven years. Ultimately, the idea of traveling is cool to look at. I get it. I too watched the TikToks of the captivating couples riding camels in Egypt, but you know what can't be that good? Prior to getting on the camel, the girl probably had a close call with Heat Stroke, and the boyfriend was worrying about how he was going to pay for the trip. And I can't imagine what delusional mindset you'd have to be in to force your pets and kids into a box and think it's okay. And then to really pounce on their lack of privacy and light the box on fire, just shove a camera in their face the whole time like they're a science experiment. Now, if you're unfamiliar with Van life or road life or the other Gorgilian hashtags that are all synonymous for unethical. It just includes a family living inside of a tiny, unsuitable vehicle. This can include white kidnapper vans with portable washers or RVs with colorful bed sheets. As cool as van life may seem with aesthetic beach videos and botanical nature vlogs, it's still incredibly unsafe. If you want to live that inconvenient, dangerous life for yourself, then go ahead, but don't drag your defenseless children and animals with you. Why did he, uh, why do you choke out the dog like that? How dare you try to speak, you privileged and pampered luxurious animal who's trying to defend us against the homeless people trying to fight? Yeah, I don't know. I think we should annihilate all things that present natural instincts. Uh, if I hear one meow out of my cat's mouth, she's going down. The parents who are responsible for all of this just feel like mentally stunted children who want to live in DIY tents all day and never go to school, which is a fine mindset for a kid, but then there comes a time in life where you're an adult now, so you have to put your kids first and not your unachieved dreams, which you're forcefully pushing onto them and then vicariously living through. It's irresponsible and setting them up for failure. This whole thing really just feels like a dystopian parenting guide that some blonde soccer mom would sell for $50 on Etsy. Wait, I should do that. Hey guys, it's Tracy and today we have uh, my new, um, um, my new list. So it's called the cool, neat, and adventurous checklist to do, and it's just for when you're, um, abusing, I mean, on the road with your munchkins. No privacy, no comfort, and if they develop those pesky little mental issues, we're actually not going to help at all, and instead we're going to use them to get views. Oh, and make sure to never stay in one place for too long because they'll make friends. We don't want this. Uh, and also, don't give the kids an education. The lack of privacy when it comes to van life kids is insane. Not only are they on display 24 seven inside of their own house, but it's also shared to all of TikTok as well. You know what else stays in closed quarters of captivity and has a constant live stream going of them? Zoo animals. The fucking San Diego ass giraffes. Your kids are giraffes. So this is my three kids bunk area. So they each have a sleeping bag that has a zip all the way down. Um, they're machine washable and they have an extra throw blanket in case it gets really cold. Wow, how generous, an extra blanket. I'm sure that'll compensate for the midnight brain bleeds of waking up and hitting your head against the RV ceiling or, you know, maybe the prison-like last sliver you gave them, which I don't even think counts as a window. I also got these little affirmation boards for them for Christmas, so they are going to get stuck up on their wall. Um, and they also have little Polaroid camera each so they can stick photos up on their wall of all my loved ones that we are going to miss. So they can take photos of all the loved ones they're going to miss. You do know it sounds like you're kidnapping them, right? Hey, Pop, Mom's taking me somewhere desolate and cold. What are you doing? I'll never forget you. Wait, I'm curious as to what's on this affirmation board. I am loved, I am kind, I am clever, I am strong, I am fun, I am brave. I can do anything I set my mind to. Yeah, everything but have a quality childhood. On this side, we have the washing machine in the cupboard. They each have a magazine pocket so they can stash all their books and stuff in there. And then each kid has a tub. So green is Hugo, pink is Hazel, blue is Hudson. Whatever toys fit in the crate can come. What they can't fit in here does not come. What are you washing that thing? A pair of socks? And your kids are living out of bins and pockets. Does that seem enjoyable to you? In this whole genre, it's very clear that the children's comfort is overlooked constantly because to the parents, their own is what matters most. Come check out our master bedroom. As you can tell, we have some wallpaper, which we love. We have a king size bed. One of the renovations we've done is there was a dresser here and we took it out and we built a desk. Okay, a master bedroom with a lot of space. Honestly, that's probably bigger than my room. Uh, I wonder where the kids sleep. We redid A's room and it turned out so cute. We rotated her bed to give her some more leg room since she's growing and we added these thinner storage units. She's in love with her new layout. This is supposed to be the upgrade, the magic, the life altering and impactful paradise. Was she previously living in an ant trap? Because I don't see how a shoebox is an improvement. As you can see, she has different bins and her bed was rotated 90 degrees. The new layout gives her more leg room. Oh, okay, it's the same thing. You just rotated her bed and took away the storage. <laughs> Hello everyone, today I have here a product that is revolutionary, one that will change the trajectory of everyone's lives. We just put my baby in the pan. And here we have the scoop. Are you kidding me? You already have that. That's a spoon. Wait. Oh my god. Now that we're well acquainted with Van Life families, it's only fair that we cover Red, White, and Bethune? Probably not saying that right before moving on to uh, what I deem to be the worst of the worst. For some reason, this account contains a high volume of the mother's feet, uh, which I normally would not point out, but 
The amount is alarming. Saturday mornings are my favorite because there's nothing to do. So his family consists of mom, dad, three kids under the age of 12, and four dogs. The kids are all unschooled. There's no timeline to stop RVing, and the parents are only doing it to be unique. It was an impulse decision. Full time for us, we just felt like we needed to live every moment like it was our last you know you only get one life i know we say yolo a lot with our bad decisions we came back from a summer trip and kyle came up to him was like hey let's just sell it all and move into the rv and i daydreamed about it for two weeks and then i went up to him and said all right let's do it and then the rest was history. The mom of this account talks a lot about her mental health and needing to heal her inner child, which obviously I can acknowledge when someone is struggling needs to help themselves, but is this really the right way to do it? Realistically, you're healing your inner child by destroying your own in the process, and that's not fair to them. They're packed in together like sardines. Those are coffins, not bunk beds. I'd consider a Japanese pod hotel to be a mansion in comparison. Oh, an upgrade, that's awesome. We know from the past family how amazing upgrades can be. Is that one piece? I'm gonna phone the police just for that. What? No. No, but this was not an upgrade. They're still being hidden away like objects in a storage cabinet. After looking at that, I'm starting to feel a little bit claustrophobic, but thankfully the mom has a breathing tutorial. Let's add a tool to that mental health toolbox, or MHT. The first tool we're gonna be adding is called breathing. Okay, I've never heard of that one before. I know it sounds really, really simple, but it's the easiest thing that you can do in the moment to help bring your anxiety down to a manageable level so that way you can think clearly again. I'm not sure if I want to take advice from the woman who treats her kids like Legos, but why not? Inhaling through your nose for five and a half seconds and exhaling through your mouth Okay, this isn't going to work. I have the same breathing pattern as an asthmatic hamster. They willingly recorded, edited, and then posted a video of their daughter doing a day in the life, and it looked so horrible. She wakes up and walks one foot to the bathroom where she gets ready for the day and is also probably traumatized by people taking explosive fat ones right next to her head. She gets dressed, eats cereal, walks one of her dogs, pretends to do some sort of school. There is nothing on that paper. Swings around. Do a little reading on the iPad? No, she doesn't. If you think she picked that thing up and started reading a book, you're more delusional than I thought. If she were doing any reading, it would be on how to escape purgatory. She then climbs into her shelf and goes to sleep with one meal for the whole day. The mom is very persistent in trying to prove how much her kids love and enjoy van life. Uh, and to this, I say the same I have in other videos of mine, specifically with the Norse nuts, and it's just, this is just conditioning. You're pushing your beliefs onto young, impressionable children who don't have anything but you. Obviously, they're going to think that this is okay and normal. They don't go to school. They're only in a van. They have no friends at all. And when they do have friends, it's also kids who live in vans. They're creating an atmosphere where the kids are entirely trapped. They went back home for the winter to visit family, and the mom looked everywhere for her kids, but they were nowhere to be found. Her big obnoxious mic drop moment was showing us that even though the kids had a whole house to roam around in, they still decided to stay nestled up back in the van. Surely it's not the PlayStation or Fortnite keeping him there or anything. We're now going to move on to Family of Nomads, which I would consider to have the most disappointing parents out of this whole thing, and honestly, it's just quite disgusting. There are two parents, three rats, and three kids living in an RV full-time. We live in a camper, and our three kids have three pet rats, and I would be absolutely lying to you if I said that it does not smell bad. Usually, it's the kid's job to clean the rat cage, but about once every month or two, my husband and I will clean it, and it just gets really gross. There is plexiglass on the side and it just gets really nasty in between the cage and the plexiglass. So we do a nice deep clean. And yes, we do wash the rat's linens in the washer and dryer in our camper. And I know you guys are gonna be mad at us about that, but it is what it is. I'm not an expert on rat care or anything like that, but I've seen people say that the plexiglass around the cage can suffocate the rats. Uh, and also there has been a safety concern for the kids getting sick. I just wanna start by saying rats should not smell so disgusting to the point where I can see you gag. Your rats are going to get sick your kids are going to get sick. Now I will say this family does have one of the better looking vehicles I've seen so far, but still the lack of space is concerning and the priorities of this count are too. Oh, school? No, they don't need that. What they do need is to make viral TikToks uh, and to use their mental disorder to get Dove sponsorships. How else will this family thrive? It's quite ironic how the ad is for children's safety online, yet the mother puts her children in danger every day. The mom actually, she's the victim and will repeatedly make her child's disorder about her. With Addison specifically, they're currently going through a mental health crisis and have been for a while now, and I don't think using their eating disorder to get clicks on an ad read is the best way to go about helping. The parents aren't educated at all and are worsening Addison's problems by being on the road. The ceiling of an RV is not a bedroom and Addison's struggles are not being alleviated by the arrangements. Eating disorders feed off of not having privacy, consistency, and stability because it's a way to have control, and by not providing those things, you are currently sabotaging their welfare. The mom posts these blog-like updates on 
Instagram where she doxes her children, mainly Addison, in such a weird drama tea spill channel way. She'll expose an insane amount of information, compromising her kids entirely, and then end it on some sick and twisted cliffhanger. Double tap to let IG know you want to keep seeing more of our story each day and check back tomorrow for part four. Come back tomorrow for part five. I'm not going to be showing these posts in depth because I think it's extremely uncomfortable that she's willing to put this out in the first place. Um, but this is just a little preview of what type of information she's willing to leak to the public. The mom actually blames Addison getting mono when they were younger as a culprit for their collective mental illnesses instead of just listening to the professionals, which were telling her that was her fault and poor parenting. Now, Addison is currently in treatment, so we don't have any recent updates for how they're doing, but hopefully this may serve as a wake-up call to their family and also the other twisted van life family society freaks. Addison has struggled with their mental health for many years. Addison is currently back in treatment and won't be in her content during this time. Hey guys, I'm back. I just want to let you know that my kids are really struggling right now because it's something I did and I'm not going to change anything I'm doing. I can't believe they have an eating disorder. They had to have been the mono. All right, that's it. I'm done with all that now. Life, Life updates. updates. Nobody cares. No more hiatus. I'm back for real this time. Frequent posting again, streams, all of that. Uh, here's Twitter. If you anyone wants updates, you can do an update. You can do a DM. You can fight. You can just actually follow it if you wanted to. You can really just follow that if you really wanted to right now. You could buy 